This is a monotype keyboard opera operator uh, keying into this pneumatic keyboard. The copy is in the copy holder. Note there is no monitor, so one cannot see what one's keying. Uh, one presses keys and the pointer moves along the gauge and as one strikes a space the indicator moves up the drum. When you come to the, the end of the line, you get figures which tell you it's the end, and you strike these figures, and it returns to the beginning again. As I said earlier, there's no monitor, so the keyboard operator is keying blind completely. All he can see is a punch tape in front of him. Experienced operators have a good idea of what's on the punch tape, but basically they are keying blind. It's quite difficult when you think, even a typewriter, you can see what's being typed on the paper. This is a punch unit that was taken from a monophoto setup in Edinburgh, and I bought the whole of the film setter system just solely for these punch units. I hooked these up to, first of all, an Amstrad computer, a CPM operated computer. And then later on, when I could afford it, I went on to the IBM computer, which is what I'm using here. Very slowly, I might add. These punch units saved the use of using a pneumatic keyboard, which was very complicated, and this did away with the whole idea of using pneumatic keyboards. That did away with keyboard frames, key bars, button banks, drums, all that ancillary equipment was no longer required. This was much faster. You could edit it on screen, produce complete clean copy. And the tapes ran on the caster without the caster stopping every five minutes with bad operator mistakes. So it was a big boon doing this. This is fairly unique. In fact, it's very unique. No one had done this at that time using IBM computers. And I don't think anyone really has since. This is the punch tape that came off that punch unit. It's going onto a monotype caster, which will produce the type. Placing the spool in the back of the machine through the paper tower to the wind up spool. That's me positioning it on the sprocket hills. It's a take up spool. Uh, the air bar that was clamped down there is where the air goes through the holes to control the position of the die case on the composition caster. The wind up spool takes, takes it up as it goes along and keeps it tight. This is a caster in operation, casting some quads to heat the mold up. And then we put that's the first line coming out now. That's a metal ingot, mainly lead, but there's tin and antimony in it. It goes into a melting pot with a temperature of about 700 degrees. The moving frame on the right holds a matrix case above a mould which is underneath it. 
type is coming on out along this channel when it gets the end of line signals which were done on the keyboard and of course the punch unit that signals the end of the line and shifts the wedges to the proper position for the next line that's coming out while that's happening the next line is being cast this is the pump pump pumps the metal up through the mold through a nozzle through the mold which creates the bodies of the type and the jet continues to the metric case to create the letter I'm describing it now it's the pot and that's a pump that's pointed to the mold and that's the reciprocating die case which gives an XY position and that's the holes in the, the punch tape control that position, the XY position over the stationary aperture of the mold that oiler to the right of my hand automatically, there is a type showing the body and then it hits the metric case and creates the actual face of the type the oiler automatically keeps the mold oiled which is very important because it's it's machined to very fine well hone more than machine to a very fine degree it has to be metal tight, water tight but also has to move so it's extremely tight this is a type that's been cast it's actually one of the Anthony Trollope books that were produced for the Fuller Society in the 90s So with this new computerization, the galleys run without stopping, whereas in the old days with the pneumatic keyboard, your caster was only as good as your operator. So if you had a bad keyboard operator, the machine kept stopping and starting all the time. Every time it stops, the mold cools and you get a different line length in the next line. So a bad operator was not a good asset and a good one was and that's why I started speed spools because I was a good operator and uh, I was fast and clean and I produced spools for other printers to run on their casters and hence the name speed spools <laughs>